Greetings and welcome to another installment of Learning Gunonga here at Lango. I'm Peter. I'm Tyler. And we're going to try to pick up more or less where we left off, more or less where we left <laughs> off last time. Uh, and if you recall, we had learned quite a bit in the last episode, even only getting through a couple sentences. And we basically got to where they're putting a hundred mm -hmm. people from Ruru's tribe into the war canoes. Leave the R text. Are they, the English does say that that it's men, and I suspect it, it would have been men. But the oldest sense of, a, of the English word "man" is gender neutral, so we'll just call them people. Then the two canoes were finished, and so for this text, or at least the last segment, we've been trying to guess the meaning without just reading it off. So maybe if you want to scroll up a little bit, so it's not visible in the in the spreadsheet. I mean. Scroll up the spreadsheet so that this little segment is not on screen. Well, I already put one in there, and I'm kind of glad I did because they don't line I, up. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, just for, let's let's try to for future lines. So you're talking about we'll just try it. Right, Beto Cody. We're just missing that AO. Which, oh, interesting. It's there in the very top line there, three, two. Can you go click into the AO box there where your cursor is? Uh, three, three. Click into that, give it a little, like, go over to the neck, I don't know, something. Sometimes it needs like a little nudge in order to jog its memory there. <laughs> That's gonna teach it a new word gloss, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work because I don't think we have analyzed AO. We have, what the heck? Indeed. Well, let's go down to 3-3, three, three, see what the issue might be. Didn't intend to rhyme, but it did. Okay, it just needs to be shown that it's really lowercase, then give that a nudge. Go, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then we can say so now. Finish. What? Why no, why no word gloss? What the heck? So now. Uh, interesting, yeah. That even give me an option here. Analysis. That is very strange. It, it feels is strange. very strange. Want to so now it? Why is there no arrow there? I do not know. Can you just type it in? Just, just put it in the white field. Just type it. Just I really want to see. It. I'll do it, but I really wanted to see if I could make it do it because it might now give us two options in the future. Finish two group. Plural, so. So the two groups finished oh, forever. I had already read it, but pretty clear. Yeah. So let's go. All right. So um, in the translation, this is part of the next sentence. Okay. So well, we won't. I guess let's just move the. I'm going to fix that in the spreadsheet too, just so that lines up as nicely as we can. By the way, if you're wondering the, the the pipe, that vertical line in the spreadsheet, that is where there was an intentional line break. We don't really need it in flex, but I just felt it was worth reporting. It has been useful in the past to record information that doesn't seem maybe right. useful in the moment, but like the X particularly, that was a great idea. Thank you. Okay, now we're aligned better. That's the let's go part. When the two canoes are finished, there is no word for canoe. That's just kind of supplied. I guess it means when they were ready, they were oh. fully, when boarding was complete. <clears throat> yeah, when the, so when the two groups, uh, so the two groups finished them. So, all right, let's go. Hmm, something occurs to me about numerals. We've seen a numeral prefix, but in the, in this one, we don't have it. It's K. Okay. And a few lines up, we had a bunch of numerals. Did we see any numeral prefix? Yes, oh, ka, rather, not k. Feels like we often don't see a numeral prefix. It is in <laughs> Kalima Navulu. It's like an optional thing. I wonder if uh, it has any... I don't, I don't fully understand why you get it sometimes and what you don't. Because uh, to me, the syntax of two groups should be like the same as the 50 people. 
So I'm not sure why you get it in some and others, although um, it it could be it could be a syntactic thing. I think we just don't know enough about the syntax enough. Meaning it could be that there's a position in which articles are prohibited because it's indicating case. Because that does happen in Roviana. Although I don't mm -hmm. think the numeral counters are prohibited, but I don't even think Ganonga is ergative. But there's probably some, uh, many listeners might not know. Uh, and we've talked about this basically the last episode, I think, about zero, that the concept of zero really started in linguistics. And mm -hmm. this is the kind of thing we mean. Sometimes where something should be something, but it's not, that's actually, sometimes the absence of something indicates something. Like, it carries information. Uh, and if you go into theoretical linguistics enough, they take this pretty far, this idea of unpronounced information. Uh, that's why that you might have something like in formal linguistics, you might have an idea like pronunciation form and logical form, like what you recover in your mind is the logical form. Let's take a guess at this next one. I yeah, don't have a true. guess, I'm just looking at it. Other than if we figured <laughs> out what gi meant, this gi, we know that's who said it. Mm -hmm. Translation that would help, of course. I think we have the subject following the verb there. I think he's the speaker. Yeah. We have a new agreement, a new agreement, new to us agreement marker there. Gi for a name. The gi has been, it's not totally new. We've actually seen it a bunch of times. It just hasn't been prefixed on there. With this verb, they like to spell it all together, but not with other verbs. That's right. Uh, and this might be a hint to us. I um, think it's. Are there other verbs that just have one syllable roots? If we had been uh, tagging each of our verbs as verbs, then we could organize the lexicon that way. Maybe in in future we could think about doing that. Whenever we see an unamb see it unambiguously used as a verb, so I think we good to do that. I'm but going to uh... we first know enough to to I make that a, make that assertion. Oh, we never solved Gangiri. Gangiri. And it looks like a stack in Ga, which we've also seen Gi and Ri. So I'm going to leave that for now. Oh, I'm, I'm intrigued. So that's text 211. I'm just going to take a look. Uh, I would like to find Gi by itself so that I, I can first figure out what Gi means and then figure out the rest of what's going on. So we get it in a couple sentences here. I need to be looking in gloss. I am. Oh, but they aren't all translated yet is our problem. So it's hard for us to uh, figure stuff out until we have all the translations. And so far they're confined to this text. Quite interesting. And so he spoke down there about Mechania, that warrior from Nonokongwe. I think it's third yeah. singular mm -hmm. subject, potentially past tense or something. Mm -hmm. That's why Ruruhu said... He said, uh, and the other ones aren't following there because they are they aren't translated. So we just yep. have to wait. But I think that um, one of the things we should do is figure out what gi means. So that yeah. we struggled before because we wanted to know what aspect gi is combined with. But I think a solution for us to get through, like say we get through the entire book, then we'll have so many instances of gi, ga, and gay and stuff that we'll be able to really tease apart the aspect. For now, I think we should focus on person and number and syntactic position, for example. Um, for example, subject. So I'd be down to analyze this gi as three singular subject, and I just won't comment on the aspect until I know. 3SG. Subject. So we've already got one for za. We've got another one. Although we also seen za as a article. Mm -hmm. So this maybe we should go and find all these and call them all preverbs. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> you can't create your own labels. This one might exist. Verbal particle is good. What you can. Do well, they have stuff a pre thing. 
element which may be compounded to the front of a verb with signal information such as tense, direction, etc. Okay, let's just use it. We yeah, can. We, we could use this, or we could use verbal particle. Like e either one would be fine. I like the succinctness of preverb myself. Well, and if we we know that all this stuff is preverb tense, so if we labeled all of them preverb, then at the end we could go and check what they are. That argument has pushed me over to wanting to start adding some of this information. Right, you'll be able to survey it really, 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 really conveniently. When every I'm going to try to now train Gigua to understand what's going on. Reverb and that. He said it. For show, sure. he said it. Good. Iruru. So as I said, I think Ruru is the speaker there. Koviria is the main verb there. Aria kota hori. Hold it, let's go down. Let's go downward motion. That ta for like an intention. Uh, I don't know what you're looking at. Uh, if you just scroll up, looking at the words in this sentence we're on, if you just scroll up a bit in that window, that's what I was reading. Ko mana ndogoria. Oh, okay. I, I, got uh, said I look at the warrior, so I can see the warrior from Kumbokota, he said, Ruru. Koviria, do that. Do I know what that means? Uh, I don't have a guess for that yet. Well, the problem is, is it Koviria or Koviria? Yeah, that is a problem. All right, so I'd like to go ahead and add in translation so we can. By uh, all means. Now let us go down. So I will see that warrior from Kumbokota said Ruruhu, he is the speaker. So Ngi is indexing him, I think it's pretty, we can be pretty certain about. Uh, it's Kovi with O. That's what I'm not getting right. We just have one hit. We have five hits for Kovi. Oh, I'm in the wrong tab. How nice. That's good. That's two of five. Can you go back up to the first one? I will see them now and I will kill them. Mana Bati. Bati was also C, wasn't it? Yeah. And so I don't Vi was kill, so it didn't help us very much. Okay, that's Kovidia. That's this one. Let's go down. It almost looks like it means now. Uh -huh. Now is in all three of these sentences so far. That's not. Totozo means time, remember? Okay. Tamu is probably yours. Mu, your is, turn. Mu is the suffix for for yours, right? Uh, yeah. Although we get it in Muna, meaning something else. But yeah, yeah. Um, we we see this ta thing combining with possession, also like tana and things like that. Tandi. We so never get Covidia by itself. We get taza. Not yet. Kobi. Wait for another spear of mine. Ooh. Andono is probably wait. And two is our kind of aspectual marker. We've been calling it perfect, but it might be. Not to be, yeah, yeah. Or there's a homophone here. Another spear That's... of mine. Two is likely heavily repeated. It, it has other meanings, probably two. Now we will use the battle axe. now. I can't believe it. I think it's now, even though it looks like a verb. It sure does. Oh, wait. They gave us a hint. Now let's go down. So be it. So be it. I only picked that because what else in this could mean so be it? And although we don't know if the sentence before. No, it doesn't contain it. So be it. And now might be. I only say so be it might be good because you get the ia. And what if it is, so be it. But kovir doesn't mean be. It means like now it. Ko, maybe that prepositional conjunction of uh, conjunctional thing. Maybe. Mm. Should we say that it's now for now? I think for now we should say it's now and not do any further analysis. Analysis, okay. But 
probably we would learn that it's something like, all right, I'm going to go up to my. It looks so much like a verb, but. Well, and it might be a verb. It might be, so be it, but it could be fossilized. Oh, don't input the translation yet, if that's what you do. I'm oh. hiding it. I have not put it in yet. Thank you. Uh, so be it in English is not really. It has a verb in it. Yeah, that's right. Good. It does, but it's kind of like an idiom at this point. It's not that. Imagine I said, so be the tea is done. What does that even mean? <laughs> what does that even, even know? So, so be, it, be is a verb, but it's also a chunk. So these things right. can be, I'm guessing. Yeah. Anyways, look at this sentence. Uh, what's uh, an interesting thing about the English, so be it real quick, uh, compare with so it is, the word order is different where the verb goes. So be it is uh, subjunctive. There seems to have been a fronting rule for a subjunctive. All right, what's your guess on the translation? Azai ngarigore na velu velu gariparo ria pakumbokota, that's probably a phrase. Kopa nus, too many unknown words. These three, four, or five. Well, that last one's a name. Uzangari Lao Andono. Let me see. Andono, a couple lines up. Something similar. We saw Andono a couple lines down when we look at the other thing, and I suspected it means wait in the other context. Yeah, that was it. Ngari, I uh, know what puta means. I know what velo velo means, and I have a guess on Nusa already. So, I, wor so I, I, I worry I have a huge disadvantage. For these, uh, God, yeah, yeah. Grane. Although my guesses could be wrong. So they're going to shore, and are they waiting a day? Is that what's going on? I don't know about Nusa. Anyway, we can read off the oh, English. Have you Nusa from Indonesian study yet? No. Remember, there's an S to Z correspondence. I don't know a Nusa. Now I don't know yet because I haven't looked at the translation. Let's let's do it. Uh, let me flesh out my guesses first, I guess. So I yeah. think Velu Velu is afternoon. Cool. And Roviana, good afternoon is Velu Leana. Leana, Velu Leana, good afternoon. Nusa, based on the S Z correspondence, I guess is Nusa. Good old Austronesian word. Ah, uh, okay. No, let's do Indonesian to English. This is the one I was looking for, island. Mm -hmm. Often okay. the name of an island. For example, Nusa Roviana, Roviana Island. But you saw that the first translation was homeland. But if you were an island people, the name of your island, you can see how these things might work together. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Homeland. Yeah, okay. I think it's island. Yeah, I think so too. Now, island is a simplistic explanation. Uh, as I told you before about moku in Hawaii, that they have this word for boats and ships and stuff, and it has to do with these kind of like offshore islands that are significant, but not maybe significant as the, like if you're on Oahu, they have mokus off of Oahu. Not every little piece of island is a moku, though. A moku has to, so it's, if you lived in an island environment forever, you'd have specialized words for different kinds of islands, the same way we have like freeway, expressway, street, boulevard, all this stuff. I mean, not that I know what it means in English, by the way. I know this is the highway and the city street, but I don't know why something's a boulevard or an avenue. Somebody did it sometime, though. That's all right, possible. so uh, that's my guess there, is that Nusa means island, Prandono means wait, and Puta... Wait. Yeah. I have a guess for because it's cognate with Roviana. Uh, and it's a hard one to forget if you know about the Spanish and Portuguese swear word that is the same. I won't discuss the meaning here. Uh, but just to say that there is a Brazilian in my life who had to learn a little bit of Roviana. And this was an easy word for them to learn because mm -hmm. it reminded them of a swear word, made it very sticky. Alien word. So shall yeah. I tell my guess on puta as well? Yes, do. It is sleep. Mm -hmm. But I believe it's also used as a counter for 10. So we've already seen Navalu, but well, 
another one. This one wouldn't make sense for it to be a counter. If That's it was, right. If it was they were sleeping at Inizaru. Inizaru, which is a place. So my guess is they went down in the afternoon and they went to shore them uh, from Mokota. Oh, the Mokota, yeah. So in the so, island, when they waited in the day, they slept at Inizaru. Something along those lines. So they left Velu Velu. Yeah, that's that one. They left Marovo, those two war canoes. That seems out of place. It's also really long, the English is. Yeah. And it's like it's like a sentence got left out of the original. Yeah. Okay. And well it might be yeah, it does seem like we're missing a sentence. They came down there and in the afternoon they came close to the shore at Kumbokota. So they waited out the day at the small island and slept at Inizaru. Pretty good. Yeah, we were missing a bit. Say, yeah, we're missing. And so they left Morovo, those two war canoes, and went down to Kumukota. But I think that it may be clear to them that the Ruruhu guys are from Morovo, which I didn't understand till now. So I'm thankful they did. Now, uh, if we were to look at a map of Solomon Islands, this might help. Let me see if there is a... Let's take a look here. Um, Munda, Solomon Islands. I'm going to see, make sure I didn't leave something out when I was transferring this stuff. Yeah, take a look. I'll look at the map right quick and explain what's probably going on. Can you move the Flex project to the left? Because I don't need that those those left menus on screen. So I can just, just see text. Just move the whole window uh, a couple inches leftward. Those would, yeah, I don't need those those menus on the left. That way you can see all of that map. That should be good. Thank you. Okay, so I don't want to put this up here, I guess. Um, this has the names. That's nice. Let's see if it'll... So this is Rananga Island. That's what they're calling Gananga right there. Uh, my understanding is that the northwest side is Kumbukota or is Gananga, and the northeast side is Kumbukota, and the south side is Lunga. That's from Googling, not that I know for sure, just guessing. Oh, zoom out just a bit and show us where you've spent time. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So, so you're due east of there. So yeah. Where are you? So this is the island of, they call it uh, uh, Parara. And Vona Vona is actually the name of the lagoon. My understanding. Um, so this side is the Vona Vona lagoon. This is Rarumana right here. This village right here. We'll look at it in map, I guess. So mostly I, I'm not going to give away too much. Mostly I did a lot of work on, or I did a lot of staying on Vona Vona. Though I've spent a lot of time in Gizo and Munda as well. So this area is basically where I've, gone. Oh, I've also gone to Kolombangada. So this is like the heartland of Roviana right here. Um, now, if you look, oh, they, no, I don't want to set up. Let's, let's look at the satellite. Look at all this here. This is the Morovo Lagoon. Okay. And my understanding is that this is the biggest lagoon system in the world. Right. And the Roviana Lagoon is not some tiny thing either. It might not look that this is the Roviana Lagoon. It might not look that impressive to you here on this map. But if you spend a lot of time in the in islands, one thing that's not clear from this is that you can get lost in this lagoon, like not mm -hmm. know where you are for a long time. Look at how there's so many islands there. Mm -hmm. These are like barrier islands, reef islands that protect it from tsunamis, which do happen and are a are an issue, but um, Nineveh, <laughs> so a biblical name, I assume. Um, this lagoon system is very big. It's big enough that my understanding is historically, or maybe this is before writing came there. So my understanding is like through oral history that was written down early and stuff, that the Roviana group really came to prominence uh, in Western Solomons about 150 years ago, something like that, maybe mid 1800. And that before that, for hundreds of years, the Morovo group was the dominant cultural group, right? 
So this story is saying that the great warrior from Morovo heard about this warrior over here on Ganonga, was like, we're going to launch over this way, right? Uh, I hadn't really understood Nonotongare and some of these other place names. Mm -hmm. Nango, I think I think we saw it when we were lo looking over here. Uh, oh, I see. I found a Nango. I think we saw it. Well, I don't see it. No, no. Get all this business out of my way. Careful what you click on. I'm just, well, I'm just trying to move it. I don't know if there's something in front of my... Ooh. Some problem with my mouse. There's Natokai Island. It'd be cool if we could uh, find these places easily. Because mm -hmm. it's not easy to know. Um, one of the interesting things is that, uh, you know, the Austronesians that left Taiwan, the, the Austronesian language family is a little over 1,200 languages, and about 1,200 of them fit into a single primary branch, which is Malayo-Polynesian. So all Austronesian languages outside of Taiwan are in the Malayo-Polynesian branch. And the innovation of the Malayo-Polynesians that allowed them to spread so far was the outrigger on the canoe, which allows you to take it over the open ocean. But the canoes in Western Solomons large in this province largely don't use outriggers. And the reason is that when you're raiding somebody in a lagoon, having a long, thin canoe is so deadly um, that in the end up... Uh, that's what they used instead. So even the story we read about them doing the bonito fishing, mm. they're probably doing that in the war canoe, not in an outrigger canoe. Mm. In any case, that's the little thing there that kind of left let me know, oh, this is neat. So that wherever the place, so we have Ruruhu is from over here anyways, is clearly the point. Uh, and I thought Ruruhu was a name I heard in a song over here on this island. So, you know, there's some similarities there. All right, let's click back to our text. I have compared with the booklet and looks like nothing was omitted by mistake. So what I kind of want to do is in the three, the free translation of 3.5 there, just bracket that sentence somehow. Not, I would want to do it different. It's not something that we added. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That would be good. I'm using curly brackets for this because we didn't add this. This was in there, but it doesn't line up very well. It's probably something that's clear from context. It could be. Let's also do this. Can you cut it and put it at the end of three, four so that the beginnings line up better here? Okay. Thank you. If it's not reflected in the original, then it matters quite little where we append it, but I just like, yeah, now we can. They came a night there in on. the afternoon. Afternoon. Velu, velu, must be afternoon. I'm sure all our viewers are very impressed by the power of spotting these cognates of knowing a closely related language when you're doing this kind of work. It may lead you astray sometimes, but very often you'll have good correspondences. It has led me astray for sure, but also gives me some guesses. Um, astray. But, uh, you know, in this particular sentence, there's a fair amount that I can guess from Roviana. Now, these pre-verbal subject particles, they don't do that in Roviana. I, you know, I... I <laughs> I wish there was a Roviana person listening that said, actually, here in this tiny corner of the language, we still do it. But I don't know about it. I never came across it. It's not part of the sentences that I've studied. Uh, it's not in my archive. And if it's in the archive, I missed it. You know, there's a lot of stuff there. You might, yeah. Take but anyways, I don't recognize those. But I do recognize Ari. This re having plural symbolism is throughout. And I think it goes back to the D and re thing seems to go back to Proto-Oceanic. Of course, I recognize Velo Velo. I recognize Gore. We've seen it before. Right. I recognize Pa. It's the same. Nusa and Nusa. I know the correspondence. Ria. Uh, there's some things okay. that I recognize. It, Rale. it looks like you're telling us that Nusa means small island. I agree. It comes from an old word. We could really know what the reference is. Seeming to just mean island and an Indonesian homeland. Looked like Here. in Indonesian, the, the other thing was small island. So I think that like you have these words for different kinds of islands and they can be, they can kind of change uh, their, you know, you sit in this community for a while. What we might call a boat. I just said, I don't really know the difference between Boulevard Avenue, all this other stuff, but somebody did it sometime. 
But I might start making a distinction. No, this is a boulevard. This is an avenue. It's not what the original people who made the distinction were. But there's so I think that's how these distinctions kind of go sometimes with island place names and words for homelands and stuff. The same, you know, the British went when they renamed stuff. They'd say, this is New York. This is New Hampshire. This is whatever. If you go to uh, Texas, where Tyler and I live, probably most cities have some of the same street names, like mm. Oak or whatever is going to be a street name in every Texas city or like. Coit for some reason. There's a Coit in Denton and one in Dallas. Yeah, there's there's stuff like that. There's a bunch of stuff like that. So this thing with place names is a common human tendency. As for Nusa meaning small island, I do. I that's why I introduced the idea. It's probably a little offshore island. If we go back, so I believe that Roviana Island is called Nusa Roviana. Nice, right? See the word right there on the language. Nusa Roviana, but you notice that this big island here is not called Nusa, right? If you only lived in island chains, a big island like this would be your equivalent conceptually of a a, con a continent. Mm -hmm. Mainland, that would be the main. This thing is not the same thing as an island, right? It is to you as a continental person, but we can make right. a distinction between like high island or big island and smaller island. You know a word spelled I-S-L-E-T? Islet? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know now, I have a guess what it means okay all right it just occurs to me i don't know what it means but it feels like it's a smaller less substantial thing than a big i'd island. agree with that look there's p p a nuna it's in our next sentence. that's awesome good good eye there it also sounds like e-y-e-l-e-t islet <laughs> small i yeah. which is a, of homophones i'd never spotted it before well we all can right see. oh it's covering it up look hold on look it's at that right, right there okay do you understand my point? That might literally be the islet from the story. I see. Okay, I see. There's P.A. Nuna. There's a Nusa right there. that They stayed overnight. So you could imagine they arrived in the afternoon. Fantastic. They their war canoes here. They stayed in the night, right, until they're ready for their own battle. Now, they, it doesn't necessarily have to be that one. I wish I could get it to stop clicking. And <laughs> frustratingly, this is uh, the Google Maps or whatever has decided this is a cloudy area. They didn't reshoot this. So we can only see that one I islet. You disagree that. Oh, there is some slight clouds, but I think what we're the whiteness we're seeing is reflection of sunlight up from the water. All right. That's well, in any in any case, it's not clear like it could be. Look at those waves. And you can see the big difference here and here. So if they took it just on a different day, yeah. Photos together. That's, that's a really interesting. One look. Yeah. One little. This isn't about Google Maps. We could also. Holy moly! Do I love looking at Google Maps? <laughs> so, Let okay. us get back to the tech, though. As fun We're as that is. Musa. I'm down to call it Islet. I, let's, I, let's Google what Islet means real quick. If you insist. Okay. Islet it is. Islet it is. Uh, what? Why would I want to call it Islet? Well, I am very... I'm going to go ahead and call this a noun. There's an even... Th this Islet word is from French. There's an old English word survives e-y-o-t an eight or an a it that has the same meaning that but survives look, never heard it in my life <laughs> yeah I, I wouldn't call it a surviving maybe if it's an old english word somebody made you know if you went to the homeland of english there's probably people who know lots of words that you and i don't know impossible <laughs> um why would i like using a word like islet even though i wasn't using it before this uh, recording. Well, specific. The reason I like these specific English words, even if they're not super common knowledge, uh, is really an inspiration by my teacher, uh, Robert Blust, affectionately known as Bob. Uh, I told you before, probably one day they had this thing where they tried to show at UH that, you know, we don't know the full, ex even us, we don't know the full extent of English. So like they, they ask people to name like, Oh, the name of all the animals and the male and female of the animals and uh, what they call the babies of the animals and what they call the place where the babies live. And the point was to show even us, we don't know this stuff necessarily. So like if you're trying to do language documentation, you may have to ask a lot of people and things like that. Yeah, it's from up on stream. 
except Bob Bless knew all of it. <laughs> he knew all of it. He knew the name of all the animals, all the name of the animals' kids. He's like, well, of course rabbits live in a warren. Like everything you can imagine, he knew it. Uh, and that, and if you look at his work, his careful, uh, I don't know if you're, if you have to ask some special permissions, but there are archives in University of Hawaii's Kaipulehone where you can look at his original field notes from like the 70s, for example. I wrote two sketches myself unpublished on Bob, from Bob Lost's field notes. And he uses tons of specific words like this. And I learned some words from him as well. Some English <laughs> words, All right? I think this means wait. I feel pretty good about that. Andono. I'm just looking through the rest of the text. Seems to be confined to this text in our collection, uh, in our collection so far, but nine hits for it, eight or nine. Andoniziu, we have a suffix form too. Wait for me. Yes, wait me. Oh, here I would actually want to say maybe oh wait, because it takes transitive mark. Although I'm flexible, I don't, I'm not going to insist on that. Wait is intransitive, but oh wait is transitive. Now that we know it can be transitive though. Um, wait, oh wait is transitive, right? In my English, it is, yeah. I'm just going to await. All right, so so here's what happens in English. Mm. We just use wait for everything. Almost nobody says await. I'm glad you would, Tyler, and I do. I, when I hear it, I know what it means. I must have read enough classic literature or whatever. I never hear people say, like, await. I, I, I probably do hear it. I rarely hear that in real life. What people do is they take the intransitive wait and they introduce an object with a preposition. I wouldn't say like, I await the next episode to be come out. I'm waiting for the next episode. You eagerly await your next contribution. It is a bit old fashioned sounding, yeah. but we see this nice transitivity difference. What I like though, is that, what I think is funny though, is you can put a in front of something in English to kind of make it stative. So you can say like, what a stupid thing I like to say is like, oh, that sent me a chuckle. <laughs> like a drift. <laughs> it sent me a chuckle. But, like sent me chuckling. I wouldn't call it, I guess, it, okay, okay. To me, to my mind, that one is a reduced form of the preposition on. So that, that resulting thing has the value of a prepositional phrase. A drift? Set a drift? Mm -hmm. Set on drift? Something like that. Leave a red. <laughs> but this is where I would love to say like await oh, I would love it if it's an intransitive state of thing and it got reanalyzed as like oh, I, I came to pick you up after work and you set me await <laughs> Let, let's progress a bit more here today I refuse <laughs> let's go we, we did like three sentences last time we're yeah, having fun but I would love to get to the end of this booklet and then come back and really solve some of the big problems so I'm going to go ahead and say Puta is sleep. Sleep, that's good. Uh, I want to backtrack a moment once this is in. I'm going to start calling stuff verbs when I see them. On our next pass, I want to nail these things down. Let's Things that are clearly verbs, let's mark them, and things that are clearly nouns. We can have a real sharp, we'll bring it into sharp focus. Let's back go back up a teeny bit. Oh, you aren't telling me to make this a verb now. No. Oh, too short. Let's, no, let's do it. Yeah, I'm going to start catch as catch can, and I'm mm -hmm. going to start uh, marking stuff verbs often so we can start comparing them. Yeah. Maybe not right now. All right, what do you want to see? I uh, wanted to point out, is this the one we're on? Must be. Yeah. That uh, Ngari, Lao, Andono, they go away. We have a serial verb, is all. I think it's been a while since we looked at one. Ngari is a pre verb. Then lao is a verb root for motion, and andono is a verb meaning wait, I'm pretty sure. They go to wait. So it's not ngari lao, ngari andono. They share that preverb. They're in a verb complex together. So the, the left that inizaru must be the name of the village or whatever on the noosa, or the name of the noosa. Mm -hmm. And you want to see if we can find inizaru? No objection. They probably don't have the name for this here. Patu? What does that mean? Head. 
or stone. Which was it? Oh yeah, that's right. We so do we have Patu there? Patu was dead, right? There's man, this mouse is giving me big time problems. Uh, maybe I need to change the battery or clean the lens or whatever. All right, so there's Patu right there on the northeast side of the island of Rananga. There's Batuna. Nah, okay. Batu it's and it's, it's on the it. northeast side. Northeast. Okay. So it I gets the they use northeast southwest a lot. Mm. Um, but they do have one of the things about island languages is that they often have an absolute directional system. So northeast southwest is closest we get in English. Um, we don't, so when you talk about directionals, most of what we do is egocentric up, down, left, right is based on where my positioning is and my orientation, but this quickly changes depending on environment. For example, in English, we have a lot of words for what part of the boat it's on. So if we're on a boat, suddenly we'd say port and after whatever. Right. And when you're on an Island, for example, in Hawaii, you have Mauka, Uka being cognate with Indonesian Utan forest, Orang Utan. Orang oh. people, orangutan people of the forest, orangutan, um, ma uka ma me ma, probably cognate with pa. And I've told you this pm thing uh. before, so you get locative forest, ma uka. This is towards the center of the island, inland, All right. and then makai towards the ocean, kai from Proto Oceanic tasik q uvular, uh, okay, and then. S and K, S and Q to zero. S uh, between A and I, stuff deleted. Kind of, not always, but in certain ways it did in Polynesian. So, okay. believe it or not, I is from Tasik. Now, have you seen Tasik at all in Ganonga? There's only one possible word where we could get it, and it'd be weird for the word for ocean to disappear in an oceanic languages. Ah, uh, what I just found. What's that? In our very first text, there is a word tamatazi. Guess which word I was taking you to? Mm-hmm. Tamatazi just, sibling. I, I didn't remember this, but I searched tamatazi for it. Tamatazi should be family, not sibling. Hmm. They should be as if I'm the master of life. In Roviana, tamatazi is sibling. Or tamatazi is... <gasps> Tamatasi is family. Tasi is sibling. So, like, affectionately, <laughs> when I'm ex exchanging messages with some Roviana friends, sometimes they will call me Tasi, like bro or sis. That looks like a collective, then. Some, some, either that combination of prefixes. Yeah, father sibling is family. Father. The so father is Tama. Good, good Austronesian word. Wonderful. Tamasa, God. Three. My father. This is terrific. I'm not saying the Sa means sky, but this idea of the father having something to do with God is pretty common. Um, so that's pretty neat. All right, we'll go back to our text and words. But <laughs> I had considered... Now, I think Bob would tell me this is a coincidence. He's not... Uh, rest in peace. He's not around to argue with me anymore, so I should... On your as shoulder. As, I can, mm. as best as I can, I want to represent... I think he would tell me it's a coincidence. But I just tell you, I have this sneaking suspicion about Tasi from the first time I saw it. Hey, why does this have to do with ocean? And I'm not going to make some eye louse and say, oh, they viewed the ocean. Uh, as I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to call Inizaru Inizaru. Lice. Plural. <laughs> no eye lice, please. No eye, eyes lice. <laughs> Even worse. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm just, my mouse is giving me a little problems. The scroll it's is bumping. a click in or something wrong with it. That's a All right, so we got a, we did pretty good on this oh. one sentence. Yep, you did great. I want to point one thing out where I was misled reading through it. Ria pakumbokota. In the other text, that sort of phrase was a noun phrase. But I think this ria is like a pronoun. Ngariparo ria. They went to shore, they did. Pakumbokota is a separate phrase where they went to shore. That's right. I was thrown off by this at first. Now, if this was Roviana, I would have never guessed Ria Pa Kumbukota is the people from Kumbukota. I wouldn't have guessed it that way. But we've mm -hmm. seen that pattern here. So it was my first guess here. 
this yep. one uh, works the way I would have expected it to before I'd been studying Ganonga. So yeah, um, that's right. I think what happens is, is there's a lot of ways to say stuff and people know what it means. Tyler and I do this thing where we talk about compounds in English and Tyler has made a bunch of subtypes. We have recorded a podcast on it, though. I think our podcast backlog is very bad. So we might put it onto YouTube directly someday. I don't know if this the podcast will be published or not by the time this video exists, but or is published. But uh, yeah, there are many types of compounds. And um, one of the things uh, Tyler actually was messaging me right before this particular recording hey, do you think this thing is this type of compound or this type of compound? And it was a new, brand new compound, something you just heard or just made up. And it's I didn't like, make it up, but no, it's, it's heard. It's out in the wild. It's a, 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 an example from the wild. New enough that I hadn't heard it, but I could start guessing what it means. And I think this is actually the way it works. For a lot of the compound types, some are obvious. If it's a Bahuvrihi, for example, externally headed one, there's no denying the structure of it. But a lot of the types, the meaning is negotiated by the speakers. Because I tried to figure out compounds in Roviana because Tyler and I have been talking about compounds for Going back years, a, decade. over a decade, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, it's very fun. And I used to really believe that like the structure would influence the meaning. And it's true, but it's not absolute. There's a lot of negotiation, like this kind of compound could, in a compound that doesn't exist, could have these three potential meanings based on its structure. And this is, uh, I believe, what happened. So I tried to figure out what reduplication does in Roviana because I noticed there's two reduplication program uh, patterns. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, I have a 10 minute video on my private channel talking about reduplication of Roviana, uh, why it's phonologically interesting. But what happens is, is they do CVC reduplication. So velu velu is pronounced vel velu. But sometimes they do CV reduplication, meaning it would be ve velu, for example, but it's not, it's velu velu. Fascinating. What causes it to be a CVC reduplicant or a CV reduplicant, I first thought that it was structure. And in my sketch that is unpublished, though available in my archive from 2016, I claimed to that function determined the shape of the reduplicant. It does not. Mm -hmm. After much more studying reduplication, I found every single function with every single shape. <laughs> so I mean, there's only two possible shapes, but there's like five functions. So that was kind of interesting to me. And I started to realize my hypothesis now is Reduplication could mean these five functions. And when people start talking, they figure out which one it is. And so I think that's kind of what's going on with Pakun Bokota here, that the speakers will know, but it's not as, although there could be pragmatic considerations. Also, could, could be prosodic things too, at that phrase, at the boundary of two phrases. I agree. Yeah, I the, 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 text, the text is not going to show us every detail. We can't expect it to. Yeah, not spoken English, I mean, by the way. Spoken language, we would hear a difference and we would know. Um, I would assume. You meant the ones from Kubokota, Ria for Kubokota, with no gap. The reason I bring this up, I know it's a, dig a digression or, or a slowing <laughs> us down, but the reason I bring all this up is because, and I I doubt that anybody from Western Solomons is, I think we're like, we're past episode 20. If they're still listening, please email us, tell us your name. We want to be friends. <laughs> and we'll be on YouTube for a while. <laughs> But just in case, I have encountered foreigners in Western Solomons, meaning Australians and such, sure. that claim this or that language doesn't have a grammar. Good grief. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yes, get out of here with that talk. But I think they encounter things like this and say, oh, there's no grammar. There's no systematicity to it. No, it's just systematic and you don't understand it. It doesn't mean there's not systematicity to it. The reality is that uh, languages with smaller speaker populations that have been isolated or whatever, they tend to get so many idiosyncratic grammatical points that like, if you really want to know how the architecture of human language works, you have to study them. That's it. We talked about last time how Chinese like is very mm -hmm. regularized because of so and English. Oh, we sing, sang, sung. But it would be fine for me if somebody say, oh, I singed it. I would know what you mean. And eventually yeah. we'd all accept it. English just hasn't been as popular of a language as long as Mandarin has. That's true. That's I mean, big, it's a big part of it. So, um, yep, let's go on. Yeah, I suspect it is quite systematic. We have a new one to guess with, with what little we have. And the only gap is a place name. Which we and know so, the place name because we saw it. Okay, Sorry. cool. Really cool here. Yeah, go for it. Is that two seems to be following a noun 
I think it is a deictic to that thing over there. That day, I think it was Arane to get back into this place where we are, Pienuna. I'm going to update Pienuna. Arane to. Arane again is double. Okay. That's odd to me, but it seems consistent. Name of place. Uh, you have it as pronoun, but I don't think you want that. No, I don't. I'll change it. <laughs> I don't got. By the way, the S in island doesn't really belong there. Uh, no, you can change it right there in, in the lexicon. Oh that's my the goodness. best. You meant that's what the I best heard. pronoun. Grammatical info. Yeah. We're looking at a proper now. Not a pro, but a prop. The so, IS doesn't belong there? No, no, no. In, uh, like etymologically, it's oh. conflation with a French word. Island is native English. It had a G there at one point. Okay, so pa pianuna, we have a nice preposition phrase. This rane tu. It could be that a day completed, that the first rane is verbal, but I think it's going to be that day. I think tu is a distal pointing word. Rane kota, kota, that fusion, preposition ko and this intentional ta. Zana, ngari lao, Okay, the, the verbal bit of it is they went to Pianuna. Gari Lao Pa Pianuna. So that day, they, they went to Pianuna. Uh, that, that all this happening? That would make sense to me. Mm -hmm. So the next day. Next day. Rane to Rane. Okay, one day complete, next day. All right, so we are liking kind of a perfect you, or past meaning there still. One day was completed, and then a day means the following. Day is what that what I take that to be. Tyler, uh, will you tell the listener for just like maybe two minutes on the history between island in French and island in English? Island in French. Just claim mean... that the English it's had a G in it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Do you know about this? I don't. I I heard someone downstairs. I have to run right back. I'll be right back. I sure will. Okay. Well, oh, can I share? I wonder. Let me allow you to share first. Thank you. I'm happy to expound on this. Uh, All right, you should be able to share. Be right back. Thank you. All right. So, what we have is a word, yellow's no good, a word isle, like the British Isles. That word is from French. I-S-L-E, it's a silent S. This is English, it comes from a French word, which is, modern French is now il. And this letter, the I with that accent mark on it, that's a sign that it used to have an S. So the old French, I presume, old or middle French, some older stage of that language, spelled it like this. And that comes from Latin, insula. So we have this word insulate that comes more directly from Latin, comes off the page. And then, so this L is Latin, this green is French. French is a daughter language of Latin. Lots of the words just developed organically through time. This getting to English is a borrowing. So we have this somewhat rarer word, isle. The common word that we have for a small body of land that is surrounded by water is island and that spelling is a lie the old english spelling of this word i e g i, I, I is not so good i e g maybe this one was long i think there's a lot of diversity in old english spelling the second part there is land clearly and this e -y -y. do you want to guess what this what Indo-European root this comes from, Peter? The true source of the first member in Ireland? Yeg. Yeah, so Yeg. the G was probably palatal or, or, or a fricative or something. Yeg, Yegland. It is related to aqua. It's from Indo-European. Oh my aqua. goodness. So what an island is etymologically is waterland. Isn't that cool? So these are unrelated words. The S from the Latin here that survived into one 
stage of French language has improperly been inserted there. That's what's up. Um, what kind of personality does the S in Island have? Personality. Oh, I, I feel a good pun is coming on. What is it? Awkward. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> it's an awkward. Okay, I, I, got, I should have said it's an awkward. I, I totally messed it up, but awkward because it's aqua word very good let's go back can you sorry for the digression <laughs> oh that's all right <laughs> i got something out of it um how the heck am i going to yeah, yeah. <laughs> i could have shared the whole time if i had clicked the right button yeah. okay Rane to Rane. all right i appreciate the explanation as well happy to uh, Rane to Rane makes sense for the next day Day done day. Uh, I dig it. All right, let's see if we can take a guess on Bola Bolaza. Garike, a negative. So not, but they didn't. Whatever else is going on, I'm pretty sure onganai is a verb. I think it's ongana e. E. Mm. I've made this accusation a lot and hasn't <laughs> hasn't uh but this one this time for sure. Oh, you think there's a glottal stop? Is that what you're saying? Or did it just that that suffix? I think it's a third plural object. Okay, good. But it doesn't make sense because then why would it come before pato? It should, if it's a real serial verb construction, the agreement it should might, go at the end. Maybe and pato is also a noun meaning sure. It could also mean a noun meaning sure. But they go titi pa moju. Monju. Remember the and the J is going to be prenasalized. No la pana. No la pana. I'm going to need help from the translation. I can't do it. Yeah, we just have too many gaps. Yeah. But nice, re nice instance of reduplication in that first word, though. We haven't seen a whole bunch of it. In Ooh. the morning, afternoon is reduplicated, and so is the morning, if that's what it is. In the morning, they did not slowly come ashore. They came to anchor at the mouth of the passage. They did not slowly come ashore. Does that mean they did not come or just that it wasn't slowly? Slow. That's so odd to me. They did not slowly come ashore. Well, only by means slowly in any case. It's an adjective or adverb. Okay, okay, that's cool. I bet I like that might even be a verb that means slow or something. Slow to shore. No, that doesn't. Hmm. Keep the anchor at the mouth of the passage. We've seen this I thing with Pondalai start no. begin. And I suspect there is a adverbial or I, I thought it was maybe anti-passive in Roviana, but something like this going on. Um but they anchored, so I'm guessing that. TT is anchor, Ngonju, Ngonju is mouth. I'm with you. I agree. At the mouth, and then the mouth of what that comes that follows as an English when we use of the passage Olapa and Na is possessive. Na Olapa Na. No, Na is just the article and they're yeah. collapsed together. Right. The one at the front, but I think that final Na syllable is. Oh, yes, word? got you. Agree. Agree. We often see a na before the word and a na attached at the end. So this is a reduplication of volaza, probably. I'm going to enter it as one word, meaning morning. Makes but sense. it shows us the limits on the reduplication. Mm. C is a final Z. We don't do that. It's CV, CV, reduplication, and then whatever happens, happens. I believe that's the same in Roviana. Uh -huh. And we also had paro paroria, not paro ho paroria. That's no, we, right. did, sorry, we did not have that word, but we had paro paro ho was the word. That's right. So um, in Roviana, the, it's written as CV, CV, or duplication in the older documents. However, modern speakers often write a contraction. So they wouldn't write it munu munu. They'd write moon apostrophe munu. So Ngadi, let's see what we've already got on Ngadi. I think we've already got something for that. We got it. Yeah. 
K is not a suffix, it's a prefix. Or preverb. Let's give that got a uh, grammatical tag preverb and K as well. We do see K as the only prefix preverb in, in a, an imperative, or we will see it, I should say. I think it's further down in this text. We've only seen it so far with the preverb with a subject index preceding it. But that's not the only situation that exists. Look for K. Not K, right, we've just treated it. Okay. Well, and if that's truly also three third plural neg, I want to break it up. So you might want up to you as the analyst how you do it. You can have nake as a single piece, but I think we can be pretty confident it's na one prefix, k a second prefix. Well, one interesting thing there is, um, if that's the case. It's interesting because we already have a third plural negation. So then the question is, what's the difference between na and gadi? And we have gadi as subject there. Can we let's let's oh let's just see where nake occurs, where we've seen that, and who it was indexing there. So, okay, in text one, paragraph three, it seems to be referring to crabs or either crabs or crab holes. So a non-human thing being referred to. Even in the uh, third sentence there. Don't worry about them. They tell us the Maluku are but, crazy. The tribe the itself tribe. not tell us. But it could be it the tribe. This could be singular, is what you're saying? Maybe No, I just my my first guess from the first example there or two was non human reference. So we'll go back to this. We're missing several words from this. So they said, where there are crab holes, look close by. What's really weird about Nake is it's not followed by a verb. So that makes me think there's a zero verb root in this case, speaking of zero. Right? After Nake, you expect a verb to come along right there. And instead we get Azahoto, Azamuna Mati. I think that Azai Nake might become something like that's not it. You will see these first holes, that's not it. And then you go on to the next thing. What we want to do is let's look Papakato. Munake. Don't worry about them. You, them, not worry. It's the order of morphs, I think. And we still don't know Pavoni. I think it's worry. Worry about something. Worry about it. Yes. Yeah. So if not is any sort of object that should be there, yeah, we've got nake there. Mm -hmm. And again, no verb follows it. Wow, this is cool. So uh, what? Uh, there are different ones you will find. Yeah. Different what, ones. What I'd like different to do now being not those. It's not them. So they're different. <laughs> What I'd like to do now for Gadike is um, one of the worst things, but it will help us get through to the end of the text and then we can solve the puzzle once we have everything together. I'm going to create a new entry and just call it third plural negative. I understand. We already have one. We'll compare the two <laughs> in the end when we realize we have two glosses. Uh, this will help us get through. Let's call, it, let's call it a preverb. Let's, let's flesh out that category. Uh, what heading? Was it under particle? Usually, oh, there it is. Yeah, it's added to the list in its alphabetical. No, no, it's it's there, there full, okay. full fledged member. It's what usually happens when you select it in that menu further back, then it adds it to your yeah to your, your artist's palette there. Onganai is going to be slowly. I think you're right. As best as we can tell. Slowly. Now we might find like ongana is slow and e is an adjectivizer or something. Um, I'm going to put it slowly for now. Yep. What you can do if you change your analysis is break up an entry. You can delete entries in your lexicon or just rewrite them. All possible to do. Quite easy. Bottle door, which we think is a verb. 
it would it could still be a verb here, be a serial verb construction. Go TT makes sense for me. That but they went, came to anchor. Go anchor. They went anchoring. Um. Yeah, I'm down to call it a verb too. Wow. I have reversed my agnosticism mm -hmm. policy and I am now agnostic. Saying <laughs> stuff is stuff. Saying stuff is stuff. <laughs> stuff in general. <laughs> Moju, I think, is mouth. River mouth, yeah, or mus. Oh, we have, yeah, look at that. We have relation of, yeah, that's why, that's why I wanted to say this is I believe we've already gotten mouth. So let's check the story. See if this is a typo or not. Munju Munju. We've seen Munjuna. Okay. In text two, they went with the nets to the mouth of the Koryohuku netting for dolphins. Is what happened there. And there we saw it as Munjuna. Oh, and U, if you remember the vowel chart we looked at last time or the time before, they are neighboring vowels and the sort of interchange alternation is nothing unusual. It could be an idiolect or dialect feature. Sometimes a single word will have multiple possible values, vowels in it, either, either. Interchangeable to me. They do spell it Moju, but we get, I'm, I'm believing this is a spelling variant of Moju. Works. We get to say, uh, Lexeme form. We're not creating. We're going to add it to this. Oh, double click that blue, that one. This no, add element? The, the Munju mouth. Double click that entry there and it adds it. Now, if you go to that entry, if you control click it, now we'll have Munju in the allomorphs there. I don't believe it is an allomorph though. Yeah, yeah. So, so we want to do what we want to do is create a variant and you can delete that allomorph. Yeah, I, that's why I would have from the beginning gone to. Moodle. So if you click in that variance field, there's a, it's just a sliver now. It's just a, the skeleton of the thing. Click the word variance above the word allomorphs. I was trying click, to just, and then you say uh, variant. Copy that form. Uh, character. Yeah. yeah, grab that. Insert variant. Then you can specify what kind of variant. Hold Ideally, on. I'm going to actually just delete this whole thing first. Delete Alamorph. I'm going to just do it from the text. That'll probably be. Why did we do it that way first? Uh, if you just enter the Engma, but maybe it's easier to do it from the text. <laughs> so you get this weird looking thing where the only, you have a, traces of the uh, lexicon entry there. There you go. It could be many things. All right, so I've, I've given myself a problem here. What have I done? It's what not, you done? It's not uh, giving me the option to add this variant. I think because we create treated as an allomorph first. I don't know. Now you can say it's a variant. I'm trying to. <laughs> variant of. But put the U there, yeah, okay. And then double click that. Oh, but specify there what whatever you think it is. All right, there we go. That's what it is. Okay. Do you want to call that a noun? Yeah. Okay. So it's there for you to specify it at any time. Whenever you feel confident enough that you know. All right, so. Olapa and then na suffix. And that's going to be passage. Is a passage a river? What is it in this instance? All right. So let's actually check this out. The mouth sure. of the passage. In this case, because we can actually look at where we know where they are. So this is extremely helpful. What do you think the passage is here? My gut tells me that it's a, a path that just. What do you think? Do you think the passage right here? Oh, mouth of the. What does that mean though? The mouth of a passage. So this is the Wilson Strait. What it means, the mouth of a passage. 
I do not know. And we, this is a, a, a neat thing is that, that we take for granted, but isn't obvious. We call it the mouth of a river. They call it the mouth of a river. How convenient. Metaphorically, we've decided it's the same thing. So they're calling the mouth of a uh, Olapa, whatever that is. It might not make sense to us in English because it's actually kind of convergent that we both call something the mouth of the river. Is There's no reason we have to. Like, that could be the tail of the river for all everybody, you know. I mean, metaphorically, it could be the other end of the body, if we're even going to compare it to the body. And what I'm looking for is a little river. Because there, uh, there's a little, looks like there's a little stream right there. Okay. Is that just, okay, just across from that islet. Oh, actually, the resolution is not that bad. That's a little mouth of a stream right there. Okay. So that's the island we think they stayed on. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little stream right there. You see it? I do. Fabulous. So I think I'm going to call it passage, and I'm going to call it passage of water in the definition, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It could be the strait. It could be whatever. Pretty sure it's a noun, at least. Now I'm being aggressive on this. I'm going to click on Olapa. I'm going to say passage of water. Perhaps. Take, take out that I from the word of, if you would. It's it I comes from the old English oif. And, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to hit you with your own medicine. I have no idea. No, of course it doesn't. Now Perhaps I see how. A stream or river or strait. Since struggling to type today, since we don't know, I'll leave it open. We can come back to it if we ever were to get to uh, meet a Ganonga speaker and ask them questions. We would have a list of things to ask. Now, that is a horrible word gloss. Don't do that to us. It is. Right. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it gives you nonsense like that, but it's passage or something. The passage. I'm of the passage. Yeah. Ease of reading. We know what the na does. Okay. How many words are we missing in the next one? A few in the kukua. Vitu. Vitu, we've talked about some vitus. Buguzu. Akupa. Anywho. Turu iruruhu panangeto is one clause, it looks like. Ruruhu stood at the group, with the group. Yeah, stood at the group. New clause yeah, begins. Gitutia aza kukua iruruhu. They followed him. They followed him, must be. In the next line, Kupa is capitalized. Let me just check that that's original and not something, not some error I've introduced. I, got my book. I should have left the book. Do you open. want to take any guesses on the meanings? That, yeah, first is lowercase, second is capital. Uh, yeah, foot I, of a here. 22. Last paragraph there on 22 is where it is. So for those of you who haven't watched the preceding episodes, Peter has the actual booklet. And I have a scan from which I've copied the text into a spreadsheet. And then from there, we put it into Flex. Uh, doing that kind of thing, it's really easy to introduce errors. So we're always checking whenever we suspect there might be one that we've- We're faithful in this case, it was lowercase and uppercase, exactly as you have represented it. Oh, this name. The V2 was a tribe, right? Oh, In the previous story, the Butu Butu, the V2? I don't believe so. Wait, oh, the V2. Case, are... no, I know what V2 is. I know what V2 <laughs> is. I have a guess. I have a much better guess, and I have not looked at the translation. Better. Why do I think I know what V2 is? <laughs> Because it has v, V1 word order, so V2 would be marked to them. <laughs> V2 is a syntax joke. But I'm going to steamroll right over that joke that I would normally take the bait of. Because I want you to notice that what comes before V2? 
Uh, ka. Oh, of course. <laughs> a numeral prefix a is a good indication that we might have a number. <laughs> so my are you familiar at all with proto oceanic or proto austronesian numbers? Just, just a handful. <laughs> just Lima. <laughs> exactly. LSC. What do I know that looks like that in the few gleanings of oceanic? I don't recognize it. But somehow it feels like weight. Is it seven? Let's see what it tells us. Should be P2, right? That would make sense. Not doing it in Indonesian. It's it just pretending no Indonesian. Let's look at ACD, see if we can figure it's out like the number. Let me down earlier to this. Uh, I believe it is coming from P2. Um, but Which is proto Austronesian for Peter. I wish. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to protoform indexes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check combined. Ooh, OK. P. Nice. I, now there's two PIs, so some programming error has occurred. <laughs> we'll start from the first one. We're looking for PIT. Getting warmer. Since T is so late, you could, I might have, well, whatever. Yeah, but every time I come through, I find words I didn't know about. Now, I, they should have PISI, PC. There we go. It's, to fart. Ah. It's, Pia, it's retained in Roviana, PC. Our word, our English word goes back to Indo European. It's weird the ones that they keep because the word for defecate and things like that are very, very stable and last a long time. Let's see if we can find any sort of, there's PT. Now, why do you think they're putting Pintik after PT? Because it's out of order. It is out of order. Do you think it's intentional? Yes, I think Bob did it this way on purpose because he sees that there's this NT to NK thing going on. And it might he might be treating it like it's a single phoneme and that it's oh. better to put it with P. Your original guess was very correct, Tyler. I have studied this text, though. It was several weeks ago. So it's probably just rattling around the back of my brain. I don't know why for me, but P2, I remember, is that like there's two hands on two on the other hand. <laughs> I believe in Hawaiian, it's nice. P2, that's great. Uh, in Hawaiian, I believe it's ehiku with eh being the prefix. Mm. Let me check that. Yeah, I wanted to see, I wanted to eliminate patu, rock or whatever. But P2, it's a good seven. Yup. So we can know, again, without spoiling, that it must be seven. Looking back at our text here. P to H in Hawaiian and T to K. What is Bohuzu? The seven canoes, I'm guessing. Yeah. Wait, they had just two canoes at each sat 50 men. Seven, could they be the figureheads? I have a guess. Let me look at the Robiana dictionary and see what that like. It looks like a Slavic word for God. <laughs> a little out of place here. We know it's Tomasa, so. Bohusu. Could be an S instead of Z in Robiana. Yeah, if it's the same, the vowels might be different. Mm. Well, we do get six matches. Now, I believe I know what this word means. So let me take a guess so that I can be punished if I'm wrong. Natural history object. I believe it means wave. A wave on water? Yeah, ocean swell. Ocean swell. That is what it means, yes. I can recall reading this. It occurred several times. In fact, they're on the screen. Pretty neatly aligned there. Some more instances of the word. So I have it in my own Roviana dictionary, I believe is wave. Which oh, yeah. Ocean swell might be a better. Yeah, the people who put together that dictionary understood Roviana and English better than me. Uh, and they did it before the internet existed and stuff. So better than I, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> what you... Dare you correct a doctor of language? <laughs> I have a knock knock joke. Knock knock. Who's there? Two. To whom? <laughs> 
I knew I knew where that one was going. But I'm a big fan of that joke. So yeah. As in any case, it's unrelated. I am consistently impressed by historic examples of people that did stuff that because there were smaller populations, less resources, and sometimes people did stuff that was so amazing. Mm -hmm. That's true. Case, we're guessing that there's seven waves. Um, and what all this means, kukua is the word we're really missing. And I'm guessing a uh, is a object agreement there. Shall we look at the translation and see? It's so yeah, that would be that would make it a verb, and there seems to be no pre-verb there. What's up with that? Yes, let's look. Ruruhu stood up in the following war canoe and called. He called. Why is there no ngi there? I would love to know. What are the things we're going to have to deal with? I'm going to call this call. What do you think? I think we already yeah. have a call. We don't? <laughs> no need to shout. <laughs> <laughs> Cuckoo is a great root that, to, to mean to have that meaning of call. Seems onomatopoetic, I'd say. Right. Coic, yeah. I'm going to call this Koopa. It seven ways from Koopa. So what's going on here? What is happening in the story? Is he invoking seven waves or is he referring to some mythical event? Any, any guesses there? I don't really get it. Why would you say of all things, seven waves from Koopa? Okay, so some things, I guess I would say like, I'm literally gonna talk about what I don't know, but mm. <laughs> kind of things I That's think kind about of what I don't know, if that makes sense. Here's kind of whole Series is kind of like that. Us this is that. basically an informed, uninformed opinion. <laughs> so, first of all, we know they have a hundred warriors, and I guess they would have to go in in groups or something. Uh, I have heard quite a bit that a lot of the um, mm -hmm. supposed Viking formations weren't what the Vikings really did. And even that phalanxes, phal phalanxes, however you say it. Phalanges, it would be, but phalanxes, I guess. Greek, Greeks and Roman, mm -hmm. like the Greek formations that actually, uh, again, this is the thing I don't really know about, but my understanding is that it's not actually as well understood as we think it is. That some of it's modern reconstruction rather than like clear draw, but like at the time, everybody knew exactly what was going on. It didn't have to do with accounting, so it was less likely to be written down. It didn't have to do with bragging about kings and stuff, so it was less likely to be written down. Uh, for whatever reason, in any case, we don't know. The second thing is we don't know anything about number symbolism in Gununga culture. Okay. Uh, especially Gununga culture, this is presumably a storyteller who knew a lot about the old ways. There may have been symbolism in Seven. But we see a lot of symbolism. For example, people interpret symbolism from the Bible constantly today to say this or that thing is happening today but we know that those numbers had symbolism back then that is different than today number symbolism is a common thing throughout the world people see symbolisms and numbers there was a like a jim carrey movie about it or something where he this number was plaguing him and it was all a conspiracy or whatever okay what is going on with seven waves uh, 100 is not easily dividable by 7. So, oh, like 13, this, you get 91. You get groups of 49. If you had a commander for each one, actually, that would be a pretty good. Oh, okay, true. And then it would yeah, be squared. 14. 49 yeah. plus 1 plus 49 plus 1. Because remember, they said 50 and 1 and 50 and the other. 14. That's it. 98. Right. So, 49, 49. plus 49 is, uh, yeah, 49. is 98. We know that they before they said yeah. 100, they said there's 50 in one and 50 in the other or something, right? 50. I think you got it. They're going to group into 14-man teams or something. Or, they're gonna... they're, or they're only emptying out one canoe of 50. I like it. I don't know. In any case, those are the things I don't know about what I don't know. <laughs> sounds, I can pause it very well because it sounds plausible. <laughs> Seven. We got it. Not a variant, just a weird click. <laughs> Misclick. And we have V2 as a place. Tribe name, yeah. Either, yeah, probably a place also. But... 
I'm going to go ahead and start going beyond numeral and call stuff cardinal numbers. I know that <laughs> number. We've done numeral before. Numeral is a type of determiner. True, Wait. yes. Quantifier, numeral. Got to expand again. Hard number. Okay, so actually yesterday in one of my linguistics classes, uh, we were dealing with a different language and we started coming across their number system. And I asked about the difference between cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers. And what language number was it? Come again? What language was it? Uh, Long Wat, a language from Borneo. Yep. It was Austronesian, rest assured. Um, and we were I'm looking at it now because we're on where we're taping. We were looking at materials that I had organized based on Robert Blust's field notes. So this story came full circle. In any case, um, I had like an extremely bad mnemonic for, to remember the difference between cardinal and numeral or, or cardinal numerals and ordinal numerals, which is the most important ones to know if you're doing descriptive work. The other mm -hmm. ones might come in and might be important, but you really want to distinguish between cardinal and ordinal numerals. And ordinal is the order of things. So this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Cardinal is one, two, three, four. And I had this long roundabout thing about like the Cardinal being a bad guy and three musketeers and it was three, <laughs> not third and all this. And like um, a student said, well, what about if you just think about playing cards? You have a, a three of hearts, not a third of hearts. And I was like, Hard. <laughs> I think that's a much better. And somebody said, well, it's just like Cardinal directions. And I was like, oh, of course it is. And I don't. So um, that's actually a, a good point too. If, you are a language teacher, even in your community or whatever. Your students don't come in empty and devoid of knowledge. They have great things to add, and you should uh, let them add as much as they can. We're going to call this a cardinal number in any case. Be so bold. You want to know the, the origin of the word cardinal? The bird? No, the this this in the sense of directions. And I, I know. I'm being facetious there. What yes, I don't know. Tell me. Okay. Latin word for a door hinge. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> I can see how you do that. So first, you have this French writer, Dumas, or Dumas, or whatever, and he writes some of the best books of all time, but then, like, we only know about it through, I only saw the film, and, okay, yeah, I got you, door hinge. I'm going to call this wave. <laughs> I'll call it a noun, because we don't mean to wave one's hand. So we did pretty good. Now here in Koopa, the only problem is it should be. Yep. It should be a cap of K. Yeah, I would go ahead and fix it in that second line. What is that, our morphemes line? Even though it already knows no, that one. And then give it a nudge. Uh, well, I, I the entry itself is lowercase. So I'm going to ah, yes. paste it. Right, you can, <laughs> it'll take a long time to find it that way. One of the reasons I make so much money is that I'm good at uh, being a capitalist. And here I show right now some of my capitalism. Uh, I changed lower state case stuff to uppercase stuff, and I charge 15 cents uh, per uppercase. Oh, it's going to get ahead. Okay. That's why I'm upper class, as I uppercase everything. Head, by the way, is the origin of the word capital. Boom. Did it now. Nice. Yep. That's what we want. Okay. Ka, let's, oh, do we want to give that a word gloss or just, you can chain them together, ka v to seven. No, numeral prefix seven. Or are we going to just leave it blank, really? I want to I want to leave it. I have my thoughts on that. just want to leave it. Ave ramu ka v to bohuza pakupa. We know almost everything there. We don't know avu. And that seems to be important. I'm guessing that's the verb, or Ave, excuse me. We don't know that. That's the verb. And you is you plural. So I'm actually going to change this to, oh, we have two there. Strange that I'm not finding it. If you don't like 2PL, I'm calling this y'all. <laughs> Very happy with that, actually. Y'all. Okay. So y'all seven, the wave from Koopa. So there really has to be an understanding because Pa can be at, from, etc. Okay. All right. So Ave, I don't have a good guess. Since Tyler is away, 
that's the cat, the mice I will play. I'm more of a rat than a cat. I fancy myself like the Rat King from, oh gosh, from the ballet, the Nutcracker. Uh, which I guess was all a dream, just like this. So where are you, Seven Waves from Koopa? Now, Ave must be coming from Ave, right? Coming from what? Ave. Uh, coming from... We haven't seen Pave anywhere? Pave. Mm -hmm. Doesn't ring a bell to me. All right, so Pave is okay. where, and I'm guessing Pa Ave is at where. We're going to create Ave as where. We have Pi. Okay. So we have pa, you have Pa, Ave, and Pi. Pi, oh, yeah. That's why I immediately thought Ave came from Pave. So I'm I really think Pi came from Pave. Mm -hmm. What to do with this? I'm just gonna leave it for now. We'll have yeah. to figure out more in the future how these all fit together in Ganoga. Remembering <laughs> also that we have um different speakers. They... Okay, so my... hey, let, me, let me remind you of another word, V E I V -E, place where. Yeah. If I, I think that we're looking at cognates here. It's a little tricky to, to maybe a little tricky to untangle, but that could be something we can survey at the head of uh, one of these streams, these recordings. I think remember that there's kind of this, this PV unconditioned split that we're seeing too. Dig it. So um, what would be cool, so I, I don't, I have not yet, after many years of studying, been able to figure out whether, so we have a reflex of P as both P and V. Which one is the real reflex? I believe I've read about it as in Malcolm Ross's work. And if I'm misquoting him, please, dear listener, let me know. I, I desperately want to know how this works, though I don't have time to read everything I read during my PhD. So I remember reading something about that the split is unconditioned, meaning there's just a split. To me, that's a huge signal that there was some... Uh, large influence from a cultural group who loaned a bunch of words. So for example, if you just looked at like loan words in English with say P and from Spanish or whatever, there's a different split. We get a P and F correspondence with say Germanic languages and Latin languages. So father is pie, fish is pish, pesci, etc. Um, but it may be preserved in words we borrowed so I think that might be what's going on here. And I don't know which one is which. Ovulu is a word I know, but cannot remember the meaning of. I know I know Ovulu. And it's one of those weird ones. So guessing our next sentence here, we have my, you Ovulu for sure, it. Two groups, I guess, said Ruruhu. So he's giving battle commands. Let's see if the translation helps us with Carry is Ovalu. Oh, oh my goodness. I want it to do this for me. Oh, man. My, Carry. come to me. <laughs> to me, yeah. Carry these two war canoes. Now this... Oh, you... Is moving... Because it's not singular or plural. Remember? Oh. Mm -hmm. Just like in, we have an indeterminate number, second person word, yeah. Well, and you got to know this moo came from Kamu, which is too plural. But I believe that the direct possession for yours in Robiana is Mu, even though they had self Gamu, it was too plural. So it's complicated. And in that case, just like English. Ovalu must mean carry. Paro, carry these two. So does that paro mean to shore? It's not going to be roast. No, paro in any case. I'm gonna call it a verb. You feel it's verby? I wish I'd yeah. done it just a second ago. I'm gonna click over and do it. Well, we get to see both ways that you can do that. So that's a good thing too. I verbed it. All right, so going back to the gloss, I wanna tell you something I'm, I'm seeing on the syntax here. And I talked yeah. about this me before. 
right? So ni is probably an object agreement, and we've only seen it for third singular objects. Right. What's interesting is that ovulu and paro, you aren't getting like a direct object agreement. Furthermore, if we wanted to translate it, it'd be carry it to canoes. Right. Notice um, the canoe is not in there. Mm -hmm. I, I was not yeah. in there. Carry uh, Nageto Adi. Carry these two. Nageto. Nageto is group we know, but we have seen it used for canoes as well, sort of. So that must be kind of what's going on. We don't have a ka. We don't. We sure don't. And he's been pretty consistent with ka in his last couple sentences. So is there something special about the word too? First of all, let me spoiler you. Yes. <laughs> the Roviana word for two is karua. Right. The a single word never occurs without ka. Single word. In fact, if people want to say like y'all two, they'll say gamikata. Kata, not karua. People will say it like I, I will share a photo of myself and my spouse, and people will say like Oh, you two looking good. Gamikata. Or whatever they would say. I'm going to skip the rest of the Roviana, just focus on the Gamikata. It is suspicious to me to see Kori here. Now, it doesn't line up with any sort of sound changes, but you have that KR correspondence instantly. So, and we, I don't think we've ever seen Ka Kori ever. I see what you're saying. How nice. I kind of think it's a compound. Mm -hmm. But this obfuscates the other potential thing here. So I think this knee is an applicative and it introduces something that's an object that's not really an object. So furthermore, you're getting kori nagetu with no sort of articles or anything before it. Nagetu is an article, but right. I think that it this na has multiple meanings and that somehow you get kori nagetu is the two groups. Even though the na should be in front. So I'm not sure if this is pseudo non incorporation. I don't know if Adi is a pronoun. It seems to be a plural marker. So carry these two war canoes. It's interesting we're getting third singular object agreement. I think this is more like an applicative thing and that it's turning. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, but I want to watch it. And I'm telling you about this applicative intuition. An applicative, dear listener, means when you have something that's kind of like in introduces an object to something that wouldn't otherwise have an object. So I don't know. Kokondi, well, I know what D means. Just to spell out what your what your thought is about the kori, that it's a fusion of the ka numeral prefix and some reflex of dua. So an original something like karua also that's just fused into kori. I, I, I would explain. Why the ka is not there it's already present in the word it would explain it but it's weird because you get ka so there wasn't any yeah, and yeah. rua becoming re is weird too especially since re already has so much plural meaning in the language it would be uh what do you call it interference uh contamination um what it tells us it looks like the u vowel of dua has colored ka to ko to me it looks that way like you've had some sort of vowel harmony. So where's the ri come from? It could be contamination with that other ri, plural thing. It also, this uh, kori likes to occur with adi nearby. So if it was kara adi a lot, it'd become kori. Karua adi. Kori. Karua adi. Karua adi. Kori. Could even be deleted the original thing. The r is from the ri. And the whole left of karua that's left is the ko, the karua adi. The odds delete each other. Kori. I don't know. This is we're deep into speculation territory now. But it's fun but to think. It's part if, of the fun. If you don't think about it, you will never make any progress on this on learning about the history of the language, the prehistory of the language. This word here, paroia, is important and interesting to me because now we get a real three vowel sequence where exactly. you might have guessed it was going to be paroa it's not roast though no so i don't like that we've here it's guess which word it's going to i'd even like to delete the paro 
and just have Pato Pato go as its own thing. But for another mm-hmm. day, we'll clean that up. For now, I think this, they too short it. <laughs> We're doing great violence to English, but English can take it. English can take it. Oh, that's right. So right. let's have Kokondi. Koko is reminiscent of, maybe it may just be a variant of Kuku, the calling one. That's got to be that because it's the same thing calling. He called the seven waves from Kupa. Oh, are you already looking at the translation? No, I'm looking at the original. Kokondi tu pakupa kavitu bohuzu. So they went down, but down carried them the two. <laughs> the canoe is the word they're using for group in this. It, yeah. Carry these two workers. They're not talking about the canoe, they're talking about the people inside the canoe. Let me give a nice parallel. We have this word equip, which comes from the Germanic word skip for ship, a boat. And in French, equipe is the reflex of that. It means team. I think it's Spanish too, equipo. It's Bye. one boat. Boat birth of people in boat Portuguese, fighting. I believe they use uh, equipe, equipe yeah. or team. It comes from our word ship, essentially, from the ancestor of our word ship. A boatful is a team. One day I was in uh, Roviana Village and they have kind of like a, not all buildings and stuff match up with different cultures. So I'm going to just try to describe what this is. Mm-hmm. I think you might call it like a kind of like a, gazebo dining room combo or something so like it's a covered <laughs> outdoor area with some benches and like a table and that's where you're going to eat all your meals that's where everybody hangs out in the evening and chats and things like this but it's like not part of a house or something it's in between houses and cookhouses and stuff anyways i was sitting there one day and um you got to remember i'm an outsider i look very different in case you don't know people <laughs> in Sol- western solomonans have a very dark skin pigment and also, in case you can't know, I have a very pale skin pigment. So I so I look different to people. I'm not saying anybody was discriminated against me, but I'm weird. Even in America, I'm not. A, is it normal to be this interested in words? You tell me, dear listener. Everybody who's made it to 20 plus episodes probably thinks it's normal. And I love you. But what happened was, is I was sitting on one bench and all the like kind of kids and stuff and young people were sitting on another bench. And so it's like me and like maybe one person and then like seven to 10 people crammed on top of each other on the other bench facing me. And somebody walked up and said, oh, our our canoe will tip. (laughs) Our boat will tip or something like this. And it has to do with this idea that the group is always in a boat. Uh, All right. I don't know what nole means or kokondi. Um, and this is almost enough to make me give up on the rest of it. I went to shore. <laughs> at Kondi, Kondi, probably. Peter, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, I mean, I have looked at it before, but I think Koko is the root. It's going to be a variant of Kuku to call. Oh, right. I agree with that. They called yeah. the seven waves and they went down the two groups. It's called the upon. Two groups carried themselves down. They went to shore at Nole at Pienuna. So Nole might be like beach or something sure came ashore at Pinuna. it came ashore so that is the actual shore we are so good okay they, okay. okay so it looks like kokondi is a verb of motion they came from kupa those seven waves not kuku so they came down and they carried those two work news when they came ashore what is when when they came ashore at Pinuna. <sighs> Is there a part that means when? I don't see it. Kokondi is going to be come. Kamu? Koko. Let me do a search. What's on your mind? Um, I'm thinking they don't have to have a when uh-huh. because they have three ngadis and that, that carries some aspectual information. Good. As in, like, when they were going down, they were going down, they were carrying the canoe. That if it was progressive, if it was like past progressive or something, so could something be past irrealis? Like, you see, it could be very complicated. Found something for us. Okay, okay. we have good, good evidence that Coco is a verb to come. And so that may solve a mystery in text two. Let's, let's just go there right quick, if you don't mind. 
Uh, this way? Text. Yeah, yeah. So hit number one, just click the up arrow there. Takes us to text two. He started at Nango. Kokona pa Nango. Came from the, his coming from Nango. <laughs> That's right. And this is, um, notice this is so important. As a suffix, a noun suffix. It's not getting a subject agreement through the typical preverbal stuff. It's getting it through nominalization. So it's his coming at Nango. It's coming and from Nango. It's in verb position, though, being initial. This coco is their coming. Mm. So you want to go to the mbutu mbutu text? Fix that? Do we? I don't think we have a... I'm going to call it come. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have my... Well, right. Let's make it a verb. If you say so, although <laughs> we, we haven't seen it as a verb, but if you say so. So no, which verb do you want me to go to? Uh, mbutu mbutu. That is text two. And look for Coco, and then I'll... This will have the form Cocona. Yeah, just search for that, and there you go. And it looks like we had it blank. So now we know it. Is coming, they're coming. It's his. Yeah. This is a single person in this instance. He's coming from Nango. And then so, Zambutu. Zambutu. Probably he ran. Must be. Is running to downward to Rinjombangara to aspect marker. It could be like, so he ran, so he went down. Interesting that here's za for a person and not ngi. Is that a speaker? Is that idiolect variation? Well, I don't know because we've seen za used for this before. What's but this is that you're getting the CZ. And so I think that ambutu must be the word for run. I agree. We just have the one instance of it. So we have an ambutia. We do nambutia. That's never mind. Okay, let's go back to Tangi Tangi. I'm going to go ahead and fill this in though while we're working on it. I can't All right, going back to Tangi Tangi. Okay, we did a pretty good job filling out the ones. Nole is what we're missing, and it might be shore or it might be beach or something. I suggest yeah. we peel to Roviana and see what's similar. I don't remember seeing a word like this before though. So, you don't work on it, it says. It doesn't have any, it, it shouldn't work that long. Yeah, it doesn't have any. So we're just going to have to call it shore since we don't really know what else it could be. Yeah. It, with the pa before it there, make it seem really nouny. Seems very nouny. I'm going to go ahead and start calling some stuff noun. Noun sense. Noun sense. Great renown. Um, oh, renown for like a uh, noun that became a verb and then was nouned again. For instance. Trying to think of an example. I'm sure it happens. But I like these noun puns. Um, and I think that like, oh, 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 uh, this works really good in theory. And there are versions of theoretical linguistics where word class doesn't exist in the lexicon based on a famous paper by Alec Morantz. The title is something like um, No Escape from Syntax, No, no Analysis in the Privacy of Your Own Lexicon or something. And I think they would say that like word class is noun sense. <laughs> oh, escape from syntax. Yeah, I guess I'll search the paper right quick. I know it's freely available. And... Try morphological analysis in the privacy of your own lexicon. What a cool title. One of the best titles ever. No escape from syntax. Don't try morphological analysis in the privacy of your own lexicon. That's how it works. And it's basically... I've told you this before, my little feelings against morphology, meaning not that I hate morphology. I think it's awesome. It's what we're doing, but just that it's not really a real level in language. It should be you have phonology and that handles all morphophonemics. So uh, in cats, dogs, and judges, you notice you get S, Z, and schwa Z, judges. You get this insertion. The phonological spell out, that it comes out as three different forms, that's morphophonemics. The meaning is morphosyntax. And how cats, dogs, and judges is the perfect example because you get this same phonology acting on plural, on possessive, and on third singular present tense agreement in English. And those are three morphosyntactic pieces. So I do agree with Morantz on this quite a bit. Um, and that's why I love my little pun there that uh, word class is nonsense.
nonsense. Now I get it. Because either you think it's nonsense or you like it, and then it's a sense of what's a noun. So it's it's fun and cheeky and not meant to be um, offensive mm -hmm. to anybody. <laughs> oh, cheeks out there. Let's do a bit more. Soon I'll have to go. Got another 10 minutes or so, though. I, uh, maybe 10 minutes max. And you get Munju, Munju, Munju. I'm sure that's mouth, mouth. What is, uh, is? I do not know. So it is the, I believe that it is the figurehead of the canoe. Muzu, Muzu. I can't believe I didn't get Muzu, Muzu. I'm so right. mad at myself. I just showed you one last episode. I have like 10 of them back here. Yeah, I, I can't believe I didn't get Muzu, Muzu. I'll show Nju. you. So, Nja to, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. We have a Z in Hanonga where uh, Romeon has an S. It's at least one correspondence. But then to their Z, here we've got a J. That's a Nuzu Nuzu. This is a Nuzu Nuzu. You can see this part with holes is how they lash it to the front of the canoe. It's got the, um, what do you call that thing with that gauged ears? I think we call it modernly, but that's also, of course, a Gage. traditional thing. So the ears have the big holes in them. Um, this has the Z pattern that was classic of Roviana. It's carrying a skull, Ambatu. So it is uh, for seke, head hunting. If it's carrying a bird, it's on a mission of peace. If it's carrying a human skull. So, and you, and I we, remember we before we discussed that Muzu, the root for it, um, when we looked at Austronesian or Austronesian comparative dictionary was snout. I told you this thing is really important. This shape here is really important. The one I showed you last time didn't have a, a super long snout, so it wasn't clear. You can see it's kind of pointed up and stuff. Like it's important. You're prominent. I can't believe I didn't just immediately guess. Muju Muju. Uh, of course, I want to gloss it then as Muzu Muzu, because what else is there to? <laughs> it, it would take such a big thing. It's a canoe prow ornament figurehead. That carries meaning. There's, there's, you have to use a whole sentence for it. So I don't know, um, but since we have such little time left, yeah, we can finish this sentence for sure. I'd like to um, just get to the translation, translation, and not, not even guess. I, I'll, I'll do my guess right quick, but it won't be good because I just want to go right through it. So when they got to shore, the with the canoes went down of Mechania. Uh, T of Mechania, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, that dude, fellow, <laughs> Panduku, to capture the Nguzu Nguzu of the yeah. Ruruhu's group. So, um, I think what's happening is that they're using ghetto for group, but it does mean canoe, and it do, it's not, they're not talking about when they happen on shore. I think I mentioned this before, that what happened is, you see the war canoes on the horizon and you launch your war canoes and try to intercept them in the water. So I, when I was at the Solomon Islands, uh, they have like an arts center in Honiara where local artists will sell their wares outside and inside the gallery. They have a gallery and you go in the gallery and they had a conference there one time uh, on oceanic linguistics. And of course I went and I paid close attention in every talk. But sometimes my eyes would wander to the beautiful art surrounding us all over the place. And there was particularly a painting that I recall where basically it was like somebody had launched their war canoes and they were shooting bow and arrows like at each other from the canoes. Um, so I think that what's happening is it's actually the warfare of when they say shore, they I mean they're going towards shore and then they're being they're intercepted right at that time. And that like kind of in the in the shallows there, they're fighting with bow and arrow probably trying to take the Nuzu Nuzu of the other team because you can imagine when you get that, can't get it without winning. So let's see what their real translation is. When the Warpenus came ashore, that Mekania fellow came down and broke off and took the figurehead of Ruruhu's canoe. Fabulous. No, they did land on shore and he went and... When they came ashore. Mm. He literally grabbed it. Man, that Mechania, I can see why Ruruhu came all the way to fight him. Mechania is legit. Mechania, 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 Mechania. They I have a palatal nasal, which was written as NY in other stories, but it could be that some people write it as NI. So we got to keep our eyes. Ani, we know, means some kind of like that. Keep our eyes on that eye. 
Did we ever gloss Ani? No, but we have a, it's a that type thing, a distal or something. Panduku broke off. Let's be that one. I think so too. Ko and then za is pre verb. Panduku tekua. I'm the Robian on this one because I do recognize what do, you, what do you call it? Serial verb, another one. To break off and capture. Pandu should be P A D U. Not... Well, I thought the vowels might have changed. Let's start with this. I, I won't say that they haven't, but I would just look for P A D U K maybe. Don't worry about the final vowel. Pandaka, bamboo. Break. Well, it's going to be right in front of us here. 24 breaks behind and after. In the English part. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Poraka. Poraka. Pretty. So one of the things we know. Now, this is really interesting to me. We've seen some interesting stuff here that goes against what we think about the contact between oceanic and non-oceanic Austronesian languages, which is it's like, well, only the oceanic people went to New Guinea and beyond. That's it. But we've heard them talk about Maluku, which we know is a language on the western side of New Guinea. There's languages over there. And the Moluccas all the way over there, western Indonesian side. If I, my geography is correct, it's not the point, so I'll look it up right now. But um, we have a D and R correspondence. The word for two in Indonesia is dua. The word for two in Oceanic languages is rua. But we've seen this D and R correspondence more with the D and R that we get in plurals as in dia and ria. So I would say that's a D and R cor correspondence. Maybe. Poraka isn't quite right. There are many ways to break. Right. Many, many types of things you could break. Many ways you can do it. Certainly. Just break straight across near the ground. Yeah, they really knew the language, the people who made this. They really did. And they... they uh, put together break of wrist or fingers, ankles or toes. They have some wild grappling moves in here. As a jiu-jitsu player, I'm a jiu-jitsu black belt, dear listener, so I love to think about these joint locks and submissions. They have wrestling styles, Nadi Vaza in Vadi Naza, excuse me for the <laughs> emphasis. Spoonerism. Was their word for like hug or wrestle or something. And it they have like moves in here that like, oh, out of anger, you did this move. Let's keep moving for break, because I think there's one that might be even closer to us. Break off branches. Break cleanly. Break Again, our open. Panduku. We want something like the e. Break the clouds. Kumata. Panduku. Breaking. Moku to break certain things. Spear paddle stick. Mokwa. There we get Poraka for something else. It might be that there's no real correspondence, or that it's... Sure. Panduru. There we go. Panduria Panduku. That does seem like the most closely related one. Intriguing, but right. R A is very weird. D and R, I'm on board with. No, look, you get Panduria. Uh-huh. Yeah. It would be but, Sure. There was Butter. a time when that, if Ria was ever a real object agreement, there was a time when it was Panduku Ria. Oh, okay. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I'm on board with it then. I'm back on board. Yeah, so I, I, I maybe we'll eventually have Alex Smith on here and he'll tell us we're completely wrong. Um, great. Great to get put on our break. Some are very conservative. I, I wouldn't say I'm loosey goosey, more like um, lefty loosey. <laughs> all right instead of righty tidy i'm just another okay i'm gonna call this break i know we already have a break word huh? give me a don't break. know what else to do with it definitely gonna call it a verb this Cereal. is a great serial verb because we get the third singular subject break teku then the object agreement Muzu muzu. i'm gonna do something crazy here i'm gonna put it back together I'm making it its own word. Figurehead. I almost want to put canoe dot figurehead. Is that too much? Works for me. You want to noun it? Ooh, uh, do I? Uh, 
do I? All right, and this is pretty good because we've seen reduplication also mean kind of uh, other things. Now we've seen it as this. Uh, what's that called? The bow. The prow. The prow. You know how I know this. I don't know the parts of boats. Muzu Muzu gives us one. A figurehead of a Tomoko. Uh, all right, it isn't going to show us Muzu Muzu again. Tomoko is war canoe in Robiana. I want to mention that it's. Looks like you have a comma there. Time to the comma. Muzu Muzu. And this gives us stronger evidence for the ZJ correspondence, by the way. I got to wrap. I got to go too? Yep. All right. Well, uh, we are left with big mysteries, uh, but it was an exciting session. I hope you will tune in for the next episode. I'll see you later.